Welcome to Test 2 Plus, everybody. I'm Trace Dominguez. Thank you for watching. We are talking artificial intelligence this week, and today I want to explore the inevitable AI-powered future. It's going to happen. Might as well just deal with it. So where is artificial intelligence going, though? What is the future of artificial intelligence? One possible future gets a lot of press is the singularity, which you know, it sounds crazy, it sounds scary. Sounds bad. That's when man and machine merge. Futurist Ray Kurzweil said in 1990, machines and med would eventually merge. Strong AI is the crux of this. The strong AI would come about, it would be able to think and recursively update itself, and then it might just assimilate us. It might find that the human is a benefit and absorb it, kind of like the Borg from Star Trek. Uh, Kurzweil said, my Android phone is literally several billion times more powerful per dollar than the computer I used when I was a student. He also said it is also 100,000 times smaller than that computer. We'll do both of those things again in 25 years, and what fits in your hand now will be the size of a blood cell in a decade and a half. Could you imagine a cell phone and all of that power the size of a blood cell? That's crazy. That's insane. And it would be smarter. 100,000 times smaller, but a billion times more powerful. As computers get better and better and better and better and thinner and thinner and smaller and smaller, the reason that your phones are as big as they are isn't because of the processor, it's because of the battery. The processor and all of the stuff inside of your phone is the size of a french fry. The battery is the rest of the phone. Supplanting jobs is a big issue that people have with artificial intelligence. And as these machines get smaller and better, and they think better, and they reason better, then what's going to happen? They're going to take our jobs. The robots are taking our jobs, guys. But you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm really OK with working like 20 hours a week, because that's what's going to happen. Either humans don't work, and we all you know, devolve into a crazy you know, post-apocalyptic world, or we just have a 20-hour work week with the same production schedule. Robots have been taking jobs for a long time. This isn't a new problem. In 1812, the Luddites were allegedly inspired by a man named Ned Ludd that was based on weaving jobs because the loom had a machine that was invented to weave for you. So they showed up and they smashed the looms uh, because they said machines shouldn't do this. Humans should do this job. The robots are taking our jobs. Of course, they won that battle. They smashed some looms, and they got a lot of press. And you know, people are still called Luddites today who eschew technology. But even though they won that battle, they lost the war. The robots do all of the weaving now, and all of the, the, the looms. Who knows what a loom is if you go to a historic site, maybe. In the late 20th century, robots took jobs in my home state of Michigan. It was a huge story in all of the newspapers because they were becoming auto manufacturers. These giant robots that could lift cars, weld hundreds of spots that are very precise every single time, never needed a day off, never had a strike. There were Luddites then too that fought those robots. Now robots are poised to take this job. They could come and take a journalism job where or a teaching job where they take knowledge from the internet, from other places, put it together into an area that makes sense, and then release it. That's already being done in politics, statistics, and sports scores, written by robots. Look it up. It's crazy. Plus, we've got self-driving cars, taxi driver jobs. Sounds like those are not long for this world. Truck drivers that drive more than a trillion miles a year in the United States alone. They are also upset because a couple of companies have just released self-driving trucks. You don't need to have somebody behind the wheel 24 hours a day driving your freight around. Pilots in the air, shipping on the ground, boats, all can be taken by robots, and we are not far from having that happen. In 50 years, I think, on what little knowledge that I really have in the world, but I think based on what I've learned over the years, the only job that can't be done by a robot in 50 years will come from up right up here. It'll come from your brain. Things like invention and creation. Things like making ideas that didn't exist before. Coming up with your own creative endeavors. Those are ideas that we'll still need robots for. You want some logo that speaks to you in this way 
Sure, a pre-programmed AI might be able to figure that out, but a person might be able to figure out better still. Although 50 years from now, those computers are going to be a lot better. But regardless, even if 50 years from now they're not that better, 50 years after that, there will be no job that can't not be done by a robot. Our whole world is going to change, and we are right there. Is there a practical limit on this, though? Like, we're looking at 100 years in the future for something like that. What about 50 years in the past, 70 years in the past, computers in the 1940s? They were just difference engines. They did basic calculations. They were the size of whole rooms. In the 1970s, we had a personal computer fit right here on the desk. Not like this. I mean, not unlike this one. Uh, and that was because of the transistor and the idea that we didn't need vacuum tubes and wires anymore. Think 2020, 2030, even sooner than that maybe. They're working right now on quantum computing. The idea that I can take a subatomic particle and manipulate it and create a data point that can be moved around. Rather than using electrons with wires, I can just take quantum particles, subatomic particles, and make a computer the size of an atom or a group of atoms, the size of a molecule, and have it be infinitely more powerful than that difference engine in the 1940s and the personal computer in the 1970s. And this is only 20 years away, maybe. Not to mention quantum entanglement, which is insane. Maybe we'll get to on another, another show. But that can teleport data across the planet instantly if we figure it out. Right now, when we think of AI, we think of it in comparison to ourselves. How good are it, is it at thinking like a human? The brain and the CPU are at war. They're battling it out for who's more intelligent. And you know what? Humans, we're doing great. We do not have to worry about that CPU comparison for a long time. But maybe we will sometime. Since the launch of computing, machines have been compared to brains. But to be honest, we actually don't know that much about the brain, do we? Like, we're still studying the brain and learning something new every year, learning so much about the brain. But once machines gain strong AI, if they do, or as the weak AI gets stronger, there may come a point when the comparison to the thinking power of our brain, that's just too simple. We serial task. We do this thing, then we do that thing, then we do this thing again. If you're chatting to your friend online, and then you go back to your work, and then you go back to chatting, you're not still working while you're chatting with your friend. You stopped working, you started chatting, then you started working again. That's how the brain works. It's called serial tasking. Feels like multitasking because we're switching really fast. Computers can multitask. They actually can do it. We can't. So doesn't that mean that we've already sort of stepped away from the brain CPU comparison? Our brain might just be too simple. So, meat bags. What do we do then? Well, AI could definitely make us better people one way or another. Subscribe to our channel so that you can see tomorrow's episode, which asks, how would we live with advanced AI? Could we live alongside it? And if you're worried about the harm that AI might do, check out our video from yesterday by clicking here.